Hello and welcome, wherever you are. I'm Melvin Wood, the Minister of Blowart Hill Church and Interim Moderator of St Columba Gaelic Church, Glasgow, Scotland. It's good to have you with us as you join us for worship today. This is the Sunday service for members and friends of Blowart Hill, and it's also the English language service for our friends at St Columba's. A new Gaelic service has been posted on the YouTube Gaelic channel, Uglish Gaelic Erloina, and today it's conducted by the Reverend Donald Michael McInnes, Minister of Gairbraid Church, Glasgow. For the first time since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, I'm speaking to you from our church here at Blowart Hill in the West End of Glasgow. The Scottish Government has made a number of announcements in the past week, which enable some of the restrictions we've been living with to be eased. Very soon, churches will begin to reopen for services under certain conditions. We are not quite ready to open either at Blowart Hill Church or at St Columbus, but we're working as hard as we can and as quickly as we can to meet the conditions that both the Government and the Church of Scotland have laid down for reopening churches. Whenever our churches do reopen, we'll keep you informed. However, it's our intention to continue the webcast services as well, because we know that they are reaching a large number of people who, for different reasons, are not able to be part of our physical congregations. The theme of our service today is Sowing Seeds. The appointed Gospel reading is Jesus' parable of the sower, which we will hear later. I think these webcast services have enabled us as a church family to sow the seeds of the Gospel in a completely different and new and exciting way than we were able to do as a physical congregation before. Both in the English and in the Gallic languages, our two congregations have been reaching out to people all over the world, and we have shown that we can be the Church of Jesus Christ in a way that we would never have thought possible just a few months ago. I find that exciting and stimulating, and we should thank God that he has opened up these new channels of communicating his message in the midst of otherwise difficult and challenging times. Coping with a deadly virus has been tough for us all, but just imagine how much tougher it would have been if we were not in the age of the internet, with our computers and our smartphones and our tablets, to keep us all in touch with one another, and just as important, to keep us in touch with God and with our fellow Christians all over the world. The psalmist speaks of going out with weeping as we carry the seeds for sowing, but then coming home with shouts of joy as we carry the sheaves of a good harvest. This psalm celebrates the release of the people of Israel from slavery in Babylon. And that seems to me to be a good introduction to our service today. Our world certainly has been through its own time of weeping in the last few months. Now, we can see light at the end of the tunnel. And if we continue to exercise caution and give the virus no room to return, we will soon be able to allow ourselves some shouts of joy. And maybe we can also see a wider message here too. God is with us in all the trials of life, and he has promised to restore our fortunes, just as he did with the people of Zion. A cause for celebration indeed. Duncan Mackenzie is going to read Psalm 126 for us now. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. And then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we rejoiced. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses in the Negeb. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. 
Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. Amen. Thanks be to God. Our first praise is the hymn, Sowing in the Morning, with the chorus, We Shall Come Rejoicing, Bringing in the Sheaves. It was written in the 19th century by American evangelist Knowles Shaw, whose parents were both of Scottish extraction. This hymn is based on the words of Psalm 126, which we've just heard. Let's draw together with God in prayer. Let us pray. God of all the universe, God of life, God of this good earth, sower and reaper of love, we confess to you that we are too often like stony fields, capable of growing love and kindness and sharing it around, yet allowing goodness to wither and weeds to flourish. Your mercy has taken root in us, but we do not share enough of it with others. Your justice has grown on us and makes sense to us, but we have stood by and said nothing while injustice has flourished. Your truth has been showered on us, but we have let it run to waste. Your love has blossomed among us but we have not let it bear fruit in plenty, so that kind words and generous deeds have not been shared among many. Most loving God, open the furrows of our lives to receive again the seeds of your gospel. Rain your mercy upon us, shine your warmth and light into every dark place, and bring forth in us not the harvest we deserve, but the harvest that in your glorious love you have purposed for us. Through Christ Jesus our Saviour. Amen. Our reader, Duncan Mackenzie, is going to read again for us, this time from the New Testament, and he's reading the parable that Jesus told about the farmer who went out to sow his seed.
This morning's reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 1 to 9 and 18 to 23. The parable of the sower. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown in rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But... As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. Amen and thanks be to God. One of the slightly frustrating things about doing services on YouTube is that I don't actually know who you are. I have a friend who does services on Facebook live every Sunday morning. I don't have the courage for that. The problem is that when things go wrong, they can go horribly wrong. The connection fails, the cat comes in and walks in front of the camera, or you lose your train of thought and the right words don't come out. The advantage is that you see who's online. As people click on the link, up they pop, and you can say hello to them. I usually record my services the day before. With pre-recording, I can edit out any slip-ups, whether they're mine or any other of the contributors. That's not to say it ends up perfect. It doesn't, but at least it's as good as I can make it with the facilities I have. The downside is that I don't know who you are or where you are. You could be in the next street or you could be on the other side of the world. And unless you make a wee comment below, I, I just don't know. If this were a conventional church service, I could see you sitting right there in a pew. If you were a newcomer, we could welcome you and invite you through for lunch after the service. If you had a particular need for help, we could try to meet that specific need. But with webcasts, these things are not possible. And I can hear at least some of you saying, that's just how we like it. I know from speaking to other ministers that they are like me and have found that they have a substantially greater number of viewers than they ever did in their church building, and they like me, have found that there are actually many who kind of like the anonymity. 
They like being more relaxed and listening in on their terms, switching on at a time convenient for them and switching off when they've had enough. Feeling they're connected with God, certainly, but without the rigmarole of being polite to strangers and so on. And I know that at least some of you will be nodding your head and agreeing with all that. This week, as we start to plan reopening our churches and getting back to some kind of normal, it's a good opportunity to take stock of what we've been doing over these last few months with our online services, to take stock of what we have missed as our churches had to close, and of what we may actually have gained in terms of the new people who have tuned in and become part of our fellowship. The parable of the sower is the appointed reading in the common lectionary today. Many congregations around the world will be taking it into the theme of their worship. And for me, it's ideal because it leads me to ask, where has the seed of the gospel been falling in these times of lockdown? And the answer is, I don't exactly know. I know some of my regular church members watch this because they tell me they do. And I know that others are watching because the, the figures have gone up. I see the total figures on the, the YouTube report on the computer. But I can't see you as if you were sitting there in a pew. And I don't have any idea of what effect these services are having on people's lives. And some of you will be saying, perhaps just as well for that. You don't need to know. And that's true, I don't. At the end of the day, it's between you and God. And isn't that just the story of the parable of the sower? Like the man in the story, I'm sowing the seed today, but I don't exactly know where. That analogy is true even of the conventional church, but in online church, I think it applies even a hundred times as much. Charles Spurgeon, the famous Baptist preacher, certainly didn't have the internet to worry about, but he shared the frustration of not knowing what effect his preaching was having on each and every heart, and he put it like this. Now, the preacher of the gospel is like the sower. He does not make his seed. The seed is given him by his master. It would not be possible for a human being to make the smallest seed that ever germinated upon the earth, much less that celestial seed of eternal life. The minister goes to his master in secret and asks him to teach him his truth, and thus he fills his basket with the good seed of the kingdom. What the minister has to do is go forth in his master's name and scatter precious truth. If he knew where the best soil was to be found, perhaps he might limit himself to that which had been prepared by the plough of conviction. But not knowing people's hearts, it is his business to preach the gospel to every creature. To throw a handful on the hardened heart yonder, and another handful on that overgrown heart which is full of cares and riches and pleasures of the world. He has to leave the fate of the seed in the care of the master who gave it to him. For well he understands that he is not responsible for the harvest, he is only responsible for the care, the fidelity and the industry with which he scatters the seed, right and left, with both his hands. That's a great boost for me. Leave the fate of the seed in the care of the master. And to be sure, that's not a great marketing position. Marketing experts would insist that we should do the research, get to know our client and tailor our promotion accordingly. But the great Spurgeon says no. It's not a formula the sower has to invent. The truth of Christ, crucified and raised for the forgiveness of sins, stands on its own as a compelling spiritual truth 
that cuts through all the communicative pretension of marketing wisdom. And the greatest encouragement of the parable is that though some seed falls in places it won't grow well, some will actually fall on good ground. That is God's promise. And when that happens, all Christians in whom the seed of the gospel has taken root then have the potential to themselves become sowers. Let anyone with ears listen, says Jesus. Anyone. Not just the experts. Not just the trained preachers. Let anyone with ears listen. If I really take the parable of the sower to heart, I must take it in good faith that some of the seed fallen during lockdown has fallen in in places that I will never know. And the same will be true of all those other ministers and churches that have been doing their webcasts into the far reaches of the internet. But if any of that gospel seed has fallen by you, then do what you can to share the gospel more fully more happily and more frequently with those who need Christ and with those who need Christ's wisdom and with those who need Christ's love in the best way you know how. I may not know who you are, I may not know where you are, but it doesn't matter. Be all you can be. Start sowing your own seed and do all you can do for the God who loves you, and for the Saviour who died for you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forevermore. Amen. Our prayer begins with the Scottish Ecumenical Prayer for today. Let us pray. Living God, You are our Creator, our Maker. You have made us in your image and sustained us in past days. Guard us and keep us as we remember those days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, you are our Redeemer and our Deliverer. You reconcile all things through Christ Jesus the image of the invisible God. Hold our lives in your safekeeping at this present time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, you are the giver of the gift of the Spirit. You breathe into us the very breath of life and renew us by your Holy Spirit. Lead us into the future through Christ and by your Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, as you have been with us in past days, be with us today and in all the days to come. Grant that as we may face the future, assured that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, you sow the seed of the gospel among us. May we be fertile ground for its healthy growth, and with the blossoming of Christ's presence in our lives, help us in turn to be sowers of your seed. And even though we may sow in challenging times for the church and for the gospel, even going out in the words of the psalmist to sow in tears. Never let us let go of the promise that we shall come home at the time of your great harvest with shouts of joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Now, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever. Amen. And now our closing hymn. Almighty God, thy word is cast like seed into the ground. Now let the dew of heaven descend and righteous fruits abound. Now may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you and all whom you love this day and for evermore. Amen. So once again, it's been good to share worship and Christian fellowship with you. Our Blowart Hill website is kept regularly up to date at www.blowarthillchurch.org and also our St. Columba website at www.highlandcathedral.org.uk. You can make an online donation to either of our congregations from the donate facility on either of those websites, and we greatly appreciate all the support we get. Remember to like this webcast and subscribe to the channel, and do remember our congregations in your prayers. Goodbye for now, stay safe, and thanks for joining us. Bye.